Paul from everybody too this afternoon just getting to know me. We've got uh, our wonderful Mr. John Wade with us. So we're going to do some introductions before we start. My name's David Lucas and I'm the Services Manager for Inspire covering East Lancashire. Yeah, hi guys. Um, good to see you both. I'm Debbie. I'm a service user rep for East Lancashire. And I'm John Way. I'm a newly ses um, hired sessional worker for Birmingham Inspire. Okay, so I'm on the other end of the table, John. I remember you interviewed me last time, so I'm really looking forward to uh, getting to know you this afternoon. Um, I'm confident you're going to be absolutely awesome. Um, and we've got a deal with the questions for you. So, firstly, many, many, many congratulations, John, on securing a, a full time position with Inspire. A really Thank massive you. well done, a massive achievement. So, congratulations. Thank you. So, I just want to talk a little bit about your journey uh, through Inspire as a volunteer. So, my first question, if that's okay with you, John, is to ask about your journey as a volunteer why you volunteered and, and what your role was? Yeah, so for me, Inspire was a bit of a saving grace because I was in treatment myself. I was coming to the end of my treatment in a recovery house in a town where I didn't really know anyone. I wasn't going back to my old life, so this gave me a bit of a pathway into remaining stable. So it was put to me that I'd be a service user rep and I could, I could sort of get other, other service users experience and try and heighten that experience for them and try and help facilitate any changes that may need to be made which proved to be really successful so when I first when I was first offered that I jumped at it because I thought everything happens for a reason I'm at a I don't I'm at a crossroads in life I don't really know who I am but I know that I want I want this and I want to help people so that that's why I volunteered and I just thought I need to trust this process because it's come right at the right time and that never happens so right so what, what role were you doing, John? What did you volunteer role? Uh, service user rep. So I was based at Burnley and I would, as I said before, contact clients. I'd discuss how their current treatment was with us, if if there's anything they liked, disliked, there's anything that they'd like us to do differently. Um, I found it quite humbling, to be fair, and it also showed me how far I've come in recovery yeah. because I was able to give them like knowledge from my journey so it was it's kept me on a really positive path to yeah. be honest it really has humbling the great word isn't it because i've been able to give back to somebody and share your experience <laughs> and yeah it's a good it's a good way of putting it wonderful so what what was your very first impression of inspired john and be honest be as honest as you can i was well scared for <laughs> everyone and this is being honest everyone is just so supportive they really are and they don't and being an, a, an ex-addict and things like that you're just so scared of judgment or because you don't really know who you are you don't know how you should sit or how you should stand or whatever but people were just so welcoming that I just found that I was just being myself and I didn't even have that anxiety and then my first day in office I was so scared and I remember walking through the door and I was actually going to be sitting on an interview panel and the first person I met was Sinead Hopkins and I was stood outside and I'm there chewing my nails and they just made me feel so welcome. And like I'd been a member of the team already and they didn't even know me from Adam. So, yeah, my first experience of Inspire was I want I want more of this. OK. That's a nice feeling, that, isn't it? To feel like you belong to something and welcome to something and feel part of something. Definitely, especially when, like I said before, I, I, and at this point I'd just moved to Burnley. I didn't know anyone. Yeah. Or, or I didn't. I just knew that I was volunteering for Inspire, and that's all I really had. So to be welcomed that way, I was like, I'm so glad that I, I made this decision. Yeah. It just wow. reinforced my decision making and the positivity yeah. of that. Yeah, one of the fundamental um, foundations for for recovery is having something to connect to, mm. and, yeah. and 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 having a, a you know a, a culture and a, and a society, if you like, of, of people you can relate to and you can you can relate to. Um, and feel part of something. I think it goes a long way for people in sustaining recovery and 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 building building lives again. So really nice to hear. Thank you. Thank you. So, do you think your time as a volunteer went well? I do. Um, from a personal level, it it's helped me grow so much in my confidence, in my decision making, in 
in asking for help, in reaching out myself. If I didn't, if I wasn't sure of how to advise a service user, I would then ask someone that did. And the knowledge that that then supplied me with, I, I feel like it's put me in a pretty good position to to make my own judgments when coming to service users. And that's paid off because of the, the gratitude that they express at the end of that call, just, just listening to them and just giving them a bit of advice about the service and you know what other options there might possibly be that they might not have known before because they weren't ready to wear it before. So it's, it's again, humbling. And it, it just reminds me of when I was in that, in that place and I just didn't know who to talk to and it's breaking down and barriers and getting their trust. And then when they trust you, that there's no better feeling. There is no better feeling. Yeah, absolutely. So I do feel it went really well, to be honest. Excellent. So, I want you to think about this question, John, because I think it's a really, they're all important questions, but I think this is, this is, is important. Is, is What effort was needed to get to where you are now? Commitment, passion, um, believing in what we're doing. It, you know, you've got to believe in it to be able to carry that message forward. And I do strongly believe people can get well because I'm sat here and I'm living proof of it. And definitely commitment, you know, there's sometimes as a volunteer when you feel like there's going to be no payoff and that and that's natural, I think, in anything we do, because we're always we've always got an end goal in mind. But it's required a lot of commitment, patience, understanding. And but but then when you face with these challenges and like some service users, then they can they can create a part of a role that you're not yet clued up on. So then that's opening up another thing for you to learn and that's when you start to see your role starting to develop and take on a life of its own and that's when the payoff comes yeah and the passion becomes even deeper then because you're like i want more of this like yeah. i just love the feeling of it yeah was there any times where you felt like it it, it it was too much or it was difficult did you ever have any thoughts of packing it in or um i think sometimes in fact when i was coming into sessional massive fear setting because I'm in recovery myself yeah a lot of self-doubt came in for me do you know the reality of wow this is because it's a bit of disbelief as well because two years ago I was in service seeking help and now I'm like sat on the other side of the desk so there was a time of thinking can I actually do this and I was questioning myself but then as soon as that session will hit I've just hit the ground running because it's it's everything I've wanted so yeah. but and I think feels- we do that ourselves yeah, absolutely. I suppose it's how you overcome those, those periods in life where it, when challenges are difficult and it sounds like the investment you put in in your early years, the early stages of your recovery has given you the platform and the foundation to overcome some of these, you know, doubts, self-doubts, lacking in confidence and, you know, since you become a sessional worker, so you stood you in good stead from what you're saying. Thank you. Okay, so a little bit about you, John. So who is John? What does he like? What do you dislike? And um, do you have any hobbies? Do you know what? I don't even know who I am, but I used to think that was a bad thing, but it's actually such a good thing because I don't know who I am, but I'm open-minded to who who I can be. And with that, I'm finding a side of me that I never even knew existed, the confidence of it all, and just doing this now. Um, this would have been so far out of reach a couple of years ago. What do I like? Well, I think it's obvious I like helping people, and I do. Um, that keeps me well as well, so that's that's a given, really. I love acting. I love singing. Um, I love my son. I love my dogs. <laughs> I've got two dogs, and they're like my What world. dog have you got? <laughs> I've got a chihuahua who's four, who was my mum's, but is mine now. I've had him about a year now. And then I've got a miniature Maltese, um, who's like 10 months old and one of the first things I did when I became sessional is print the picture up and put it straight on the board in there so everyone can see them. <laughs> um, but yeah I'm just forever developing me because and but it's exciting and I don't see it as punishment I used to think I don't know who I am I don't know what I want to do and I used to deem it as punishment like oh it's so unfair but it's not it's so exciting I can do yeah. anything I can do anything I can try anything yeah, yeah. So, and, and that commitment and, and of, of having a, a pet uh, a dog, uh, uh, any pet of any description, it takes commitment, doesn't it? And, and um, you know, if you can commit to something, looking after something, it, it just it paves the way to committing to other things. And 
um, okay. getting some stability within that. So, did you mention if you got any hobbies? Yeah, I like acting. I do do a lot of okay. acting. I do acting as and when I can, but I do do a lot of singing, to be honest. I do sing a lot. So tell me more about your acting, John. What You seem really passionate about it. Yeah, so for me, I always loved it from school, but in school, because I was very unconfident again, unsure of who I was, my home life was quite chaotic. So for me, acting was a bit of an escape, and I loved the idea of taking on another character and being in a completely different world. And it's like a form of escapism, really. Yeah. And as I got older, that's obviously developed into other things, but since getting back on the straight and narrow, it, I started taking acting classes again with Act Up North in Manchester, and just very recently, I've just secured an acting agent. So yeah. I'm just waiting to go live on Spotlight. And then hopefully, that's where the real auditions are at. <laughs> <laughs> well, and this, this audition might stand you in good stead again, if, you know, getting overcoming your fears and your nerves and all that sort of stuff. And what, what, what kind of acting? Is it, is it kind of like quite eclectic in that way? Is it generic? Is it, have you got a specific genre of acting that you, you're interested in? Um, it's just whatever, being too early and you need credit, so it's just whatever you can get, student films, whatever it is, right. it's still at the end of the day, but I did recently, there was one called The Cold-Blooded, which were due to film another episode later on, um, I did play a bit of a criminal in that, no, I loved it, uh, <laughs> I loved it, yeah. <laughs> but for me, the, the perfect character for me would be someone that had a good story to tell, so that was quite unstable and just realistic, that you can right, relate okay. to. Yeah, fascinating. Thank you. Um, so, probably links into this question. You might have already touched on it a little bit. So, what acting, what what acting career, what kind of actor would you like to mirror? Who, who's your idol? Oh, that's really difficult. Hmm. See, I don't really have one. That sounds so bad, doesn't it? Because I just I I watch films and I, I love. I love acting anyway, so I wouldn't really say I have an idol, but like James McAvoy in Split, where he plays all the different yeah, personalities, yeah. like that, where you can really get yourself stuck into, I think, and showcase who you are, I think. That would yeah. be really good, really I, interesting. I read a story about Heath Ledger. He he spent weeks and months getting into character and, and, and personality of being an actor, and that was fascinating, and sounds like something that you would get your teeth into and, and trying to really, you know, understand the role that you're playing and yeah. it sounds fascinating. That's everything from me, John. I'm going to hand you over to Debbie. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, David. Hiya, John. Hi. Um, yeah, congratulations with everything. Um, I just want to ask you some questions really um, about your experience, you know, when I was a staff member. So, so like, now you're you're in employment, you know. Was it like on your sessional as opposed to being a volunteer? So yeah. what's your what's your impressions now of being back on the other side? I love it. <laughs> and I love it because it's because awesome. you're learning all the different processes behind what it involves to get somebody where they want to be, and uh, I, I'm still in that learning stage. So for me, it's all exciting. Um, and sometimes I get a bit panicky that I've not took everything on board. But you, it, you're faced with so many different things that you're learning so much in one day and no two days are the same. Um, obviously, there's an element of sadness and stuff. And it is it can be quite sad, obviously, because yeah. of the nature of what we do. But I absolutely love it because you go home and you actually feel fulfilled. I actually go home and I just, like, when you've closed your laptop and you've got all your work done, you're just like, I feel so good, like... I just yeah. feel so to be honest, it really does. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, that's good, that. So it is It is kind of one of them kind of roles, isn't it, where every day is different because you're dealing with so many complex like, situations. So no, no, nothing's ever the same. Nothing's the same. I mean, a situation might appear the same, but, but underneath that and the causes of that are entirely different. So although you might have yeah. a, a solution... Mm. The, the reasons of getting there is entirely different so it's like having fresh eyes all the time so you it can be quite mentally challenging yeah um, because you're having to think fast and think on your feet and but people are always there to reach out to mm. and that's one thing i found like 
if, if it weren't for people in the office, I'd be like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. But the yeah. the, the, the guidance that you get, you, you're not you're not on your own. Yeah, you're really good not. That. Good, brilliant. So, on a a big a larger scale type of thing, what's your actual aspirations in your new role? Um, I just right now I just want to know everything, but that's not possible. We'll never know everything, will we? Because if we did, they'd be not to learn. But I don't know. I think just getting settled, maintaining a caseload, building a good rapport with my clients, yeah. learning the processes yeah. of getting them to detox, to rehab, things like that. Um, just continue a continuation of what I am doing, but on a deeper level. Yeah. Right now, I think yeah. for me, and just I love that that one-to-one -one you get with them and when they really start to open up and and you find that connection of that because you look for the similarities don't you not the differences and yeah. that's what they build the trust on and it's just it feels so good when someone actually opens up as you've seen yourself when they yeah. open up that feeling you get and you're just like yes we're getting yeah. somewhere yeah there's no feeling yeah yeah it is bro um so compared to yourself now as a um, coming through treatment and stuff like that for yourself, what would you say to your younger self? Do you know what? I, Be kind yeah. to myself. Yeah. I was so self-critical that I set out on a lot of opportunities and done myself wrong for the sake of of not wanting to take or not wanting to have the belief in myself. So I'd be kind to myself, mm. probably. Um, yeah. Yeah, and just believe in myself. Yeah, that's great. That. So, being kind to yourself and 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 looking back at your younger self. So, what sort of message would you would you give to like people beginning their journey, or to those who are not yet at that stage but beginning the the stage of treatment and recovery? Give yourself a chance. I've said that before. Um, mm -hmm. All we need to do is give ourselves that chance. If if we, but we know ourselves. We can access service many times, and we do want it, but we don't care. And that's because we don't really know who we are, or we don't really have any self worth. Yeah. So, I think falling into being kind with yourself, just little acts of kindness to yourself a day, really raises your self esteem, and that's when you start to give yourself a chance. And yeah. you just need that one day where you give yourself a chance, and you just go for it. And yeah. you know, your whole world could change and it's not it's not gonna be easy, it's not overnight. And that's where the commitment comes into it. But you know, looking back at my life just two years ago, I can't I'm like in disbelief sometimes. My family's like, Who are you? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> but I'd rather be this version of me. So just give yourself a chance. That's it, yeah. It's it's um it's believing that we can, isn't it, you know like you said, being in addiction and stuff like that, and thinking that we don't, we can't do these sort of things, but yes, we can, you know, yeah. anybody can do it. But yeah, And that's the clue there, we, that's the clue there, isn't it? We, yeah. we can, we can't do it alone, we but yeah. no. we accept the help. No. Yeah. yeah, great, thanks, John, brilliant. That's all from me um, at the minute, thank you. <laughs> How does that feel, John? God, I got, felt getting a bit emotional towards the end there. Yeah. yeah. That's the past yeah, really coming through, is. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It is. You know, I am just so grateful for my opportunities that I've been given. So for anyone that's going to watch this, just just stick with yourself because you can't go wrong. You can't. There's no right or wrong way to recovery, is there? It's just keeping it in the day no. and doing the best you can for that day. Yeah. Yeah, you, you're an absolute inspiration, John, and, and, and Debbie and, and everybody that we meet and, and work with. And and like you said, for anybody watching this video, um, get in touch with Debbie and John and, and the magic is within, within the community of people within treatment and, and recovery and what, whatever stage people are at. And our doors are open, our, our phones are on and, and we're, we're, we're ready and here to greet people where, whatever stage you're at and yeah. we will meet you wherever you're at and we, we're happy to support and, and, and try and guide um, I'm not the expert but together we are um, yeah. 
took to a massive community of people with a wealth of experience from all walks of life and um so we're here if, if you've not been to see us since the pandemic and we'd love to see you pop in for a brew and a chat and come and speak to john and debbie and, and all the rest of the guys and we look forward to seeing you soon thank you debbie thank you john it's been a yep. great getting to know john session so thank you thank you thank you